This is not another story about how you need to come and save Africa. In fact, my goal today is to give you reasons to start to see Africa differently. It is not lost on me that my continent has long been the world's biggest begging bowl. It is not lost on me that Africa has long been synonymous with poverty, corruption, disease, underdevelopment. In fact, a Google Images search for the word Africans will ask you if you actually meant starving Africans or poor Africans. Really, try it. And so in 2002, I packed my bags, I got that visa, I left Nigeria for, for college in the US. I was leaving average incomes of $350 a year. That's roughly a dollar a person. I was leaving a country that had just emerged from the shadows of 12 years of military rule. My prospects were dim. So yes, I packed my bags and I left. I came to college in the United States. And then Jude, a friend of mine, asked me a question that would forever change the way I understand my relationship with Africa. He said, if it's not you and me, who's Africa? Is it to develop? That question kept ringing in my head. Whose Africa is it to develop? I could get really comfortable here. Assimilate. Check out the accent. <laughs> <laughs> but there was another part of me that I wanted to take ownership of that question. And so, after university, I decided to visit this place I had left to understand what it was that I was leaving behind. I called my journey Solving Africa. It was a trip to seven countries around the continent. That, that name, as funny as it may sound to some of you, was actually my answer to Jude's question. About a week after the site SolvingAfrica.com went live, I had received my first fully funded round trip. Fast forward six months, 53 donations, roughly 40 volunteer hours, and about 10 guest rooms. I had visited Tunisia, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, Senegal, Ghana, and Nigeria. There was a story being written across the African continent. It is a story that I began recognizing with, et with each country that I visited. It is a story that echoes softly now but louder and louder every day. And this is it. Africa's stars are aligning. I see it in the, in the way that Africans relate to Africa. I see it in the way Africans outside Africa are starting to think of Africa, and also in the way that people who aren't even Africans are thinking of the continent. Let me tell you about Sami Gatow. I met him in Kenya. He lives in Nairobi but specifically in a slum in Nairobi called Matare. This is what Matare looks like. By all accounts, not a place you would want to live. There are open sewers, people live in shacks, there's trash everywhere. But Sammy organized people to begin cleaning public bathrooms around Matare. Not only in Matare, he moved this to other slums in Nairobi. Pretty soon, people in those slums said no, Stop, it's okay, we can clean our own bathrooms. And they organize their own toilet cleaning programs. <laughs> and then, okay, he moved back to Matare. And Sammy thought to himself, I would really like Matare to become the Hollywood of Kenya. And you know what he did? He got donations for computers, for books, for video equipment. And when foreign exchange students or aid workers came to observe what was going on in Matare, he got them into his own work. <coughs> When I visited Matare, this is what I saw. And this is right next to the picture I just showed you. Sammy's place, he calls this the Matare Resource Center, is swept clean. On the right, he lives there with his wife. But on the left, there are, there are teenagers, at least when I was there, there were teenagers who were recording their first music video. This is what Sammy built. And this amazing change is not just happening among Africans who have never left. People who have left are starting to return. But before we get to that story, African immigrants in other countries sent home, at least in 2011, $27 billion. And of course, I know we're in Silicon Valley. We'll, these billions are everywhere, these companies. <laughs> so to put that in context, that is larger than 
the GDP of 93 countries. African immigrants. But of course you expect that people will send money home. It's what you do when you leave. But not just people who have sent money home. There are others, many Africans, starting to return and build businesses in Africa. Let me tell you about this man. His name is Tadios Belete. Belete is from Ethiopia, had lived about 20 years in Boston before deciding he was going to go start a spa in Addis Ababa. A spa. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but when I think spa, I don't think, definitely not one of the world's poorest countries, no. I mean, come on. Um, but he did this. This is what he built. And not just the spa, a few years later, that had grown into hotels and resorts all over Ethiopia. He did this, and today employs roughly 700 people and counting. I can tell you more stories like Tadios. I can tell you about Dunladi Verheijen in Nigeria. I can tell you about Fred Swanaker, a GSB alum in South Africa. Or even about Patrick Ewa in Ghana. We don't have that much time, though. <laughs> So let me talk about the third thing I mentioned, the way that the discourse is changing among people who aren't even Africans. Growing up, I came to understand that Africa has often been the world's charity case, right? Many people saw my continent as this unfortunate place and needed to come to the help of my hapless, hapless home. But that, dis that, that, that is actually changing, because now instead of seeing resources, people see resourceful partners. Foreign direct investment has gone from 11 billion in 2002 when I left to 40 billion in 2012. Companies like IBM, GE, Microsoft, they've all set up shop. It's clear, things are changing in Africa. So now when I think of Nigeria, and you remember how afraid I was, how kind of despondent I was about the future? That's all changed now, because I look forward to going back to Nigeria, I'm excited. My friends call me often and say, hey, when are you coming back? When is this happening? And they're not alone. It's not just in their minds. Nigeria's average income went from $350 in 2002, $1,400 now. Not just that, life expectancy, growing at half a year, six months, every new year. So just by virtue of being in Nigeria now, you wait one new year, and your life is extended six months. <laughs> I would take that. <laughs> and then, remember when I talked about military rule? We've had three successful transitions of power. Yes. The stars are aligning. Things are happening. How awesome would it be to look back and to tell your kids that you were a part of that story? Africa is going to change dramatically in our lifetime. That's how fast things are happening. And so my call to action today is find your place in that story. To the Africans in Africa, keep dreaming. To those siblings in Senegal, that young man in Ethiopia, that young woman in Ghana, the odds are finally in your favor. To Africans who don't live in Africa, it's clear that your remittances make a lot of difference. But what matters exponentially more is when you move back your ideas, your expertise, your inspiration to people on the ground. And to all of you, although you may not be African, although you are 10,000 miles away from the continent, what you do and say and think also matters. So when you see Africa, do you see a place to be pitied or a place to invest? When you think of Africa, do you think of problems or opportunity? When you see us, do you see charity or dignity? Thank you.